Last year uh, was the first time we actually engaged in this exercise in the format uh, that we're doing uh, today. And it was actually a very detailed 78-slide, uh, data-rich um, logic uh, for where it was we were and what it was we were trying to do and where it was we were going to at least provide you for the fact that strategy at the institution doesn't come out of thin air, okay? uh, and that, in fact, the institution had one. Uh, and I remarked um, that I was lucky enough the night before um, the, uh, the presentation of the State of the College to get a download from a, a blog, www.gapingvoid.com, uh, that articulated uh, what I thought was a perfect uh, strategic logic for the institution. And that, uh, that uh, cartoon, which many of you remember seeing, said, uh, why bother trying to be the best when you can be the only? And I showed the cartoon and I said, except for the fact that I have 75 other slides that we spent three weeks putting together, I think we're done. So, what have we done over the last year? Although large parts of our energy continuing to go into making sure that we're not only the best, but we're the only, um, we had the opportunity to engage Hugh McLeod, who was the, uh, the cartoonist and artist who actually did uh, the work behind that cartoon and who is the, uh, the pen behind WW Gaping Void. Uh, and I said, I would like you to become the official cartoonist of Babson College. As you can see, we're taking on a color for positioning the institution. Uh, that has all of the trappings of uh, a child in elementary school. Um, and as we go forward, uh, we'll understand a little bit more about why and what we're trying to do. And so we'll just quickly go through the basics of reminding you what we talked about last year, but now shifting the spin from a generic piece of artwork to a more specific one. So the first thing we've done is we've now gone with the Jerry Garcia quote, uh, and, uh, and we're taking editorial license with institutional mascots. Uh, many of you might think the mascot is the beaver. It is the beaver. It will continue to be the beaver. Uh, but alongside the beaver, now we actually have this oversized pickle. Uh, and on the left side, you have an undergraduate cartoon. And on the right side, you have an MBA cartoon. Uh, and it essentially says, don't be the best in the world at what you do. And next to Babson on the undergraduate agenda is the University of Southern California, Indiana University, Berkeley, UPenn, otherwise known as Wharton, and MIT. Uh, and those are numbers two, three, four, and five, and six in the, in the US News and World Report rankings. Um, on the MBA side, we have the Babson MBA. Uh, standing in front, and then there we have MIT, Harvard, Wharton, Kellogg, and Stanford. Now, in both of those situations, what you see are a collection of extraordinary institutions with an incredulous look on their face, trying to figure out how within the confines of these great universities they find themselves standing behind a small college. And, um, but this isn't the strategy. Being number one at what we do, as we talked about last year, is merely an outcome. This is the strategy. The strategy is to be the only one in the world who does what you do. Not BAPS and standing along five other undergraduate institutions or five other graduate institutions, but it is explicit recognition of the fact that there are only two generic strategies for competition in the world. One is to be a low-cost provider. Two is to be a meaningful differentiator around things that people consider to be important. We've chosen to be a meaningful differentiator. Our differentiator is entrepreneurial thought and action. We'll go into that in substantially more detail as we go forward. And we are, and I believe I can say quite safely, we are not only the best institution in the world for entrepreneurship, on the left side for 15 years at the undergraduate level, on the right side for 18 years at the graduate level, but we are now both the best and the only. That's really cool. And we did it in some reasonably unsophisticated and straightforward ways. For example, 
Um, we earlier on were debating our position in entrepreneurship and had serious concerns about the fact that that position in entrepreneurship was at risk because other institutions were targeting entrepreneurial activity and they had money. The basic argument that we had going into the strategy in 2008 was not only was that an inaccurate representation of reality, but in fact, it gave us a great opportunity to recognize that there were things about Babson that were incredibly special that were not necessarily related to the accumulation of wealth as an institution. And that money, although it is wonderful, has an amazing capacity within higher education institutions to as often as not build walls rather than tear walls down. This is an institution where the faculty has regularly and routinely been involved in extraordinary interdisciplinary work without the traditional boundaries of academia in ways which I'm always fond of saying when my wife was on the faculty and on the curriculum design committee here in 1994 for the MBA program, I was chairing the curriculum redo at Harvard Business School the Babson curriculum redo was done on my cookie budget. <laughs> and Babson got 20 times more done than we ever got done with our work at the Harvard Business School because we were all incredibly smart people standing behind incredibly solid brick walls that were well endowed and expensively built.